I wanted to do an example, um, in this case, of building a form out of some of the simple shapes in Cinema 4D. These are um, called primitives, or you know, pr simple shapes are called primitives. Um, and I want to just give this tutorial for people who are totally new to 3D, try to uh, you know, give you an accessible uh, point of entry, and to show you that it doesn't need to be really intimidating. Um, it can be, for sure, but uh, if you're doing something, starting off for the first time, I want you to just get something done. I'm gonna start off in the standard layout, uh, and I'm, I've toggled on the new layout. So this is the new standard layout. Like I said in a previous video, I don't use this a whole lot, but I'm trying to get used to it, so I wanna start from there. Uh, so I wanted to make, uh, you know, like m maybe a face. Uh, as I press keys, you should see, uh, see those up, up here, up here, um, so you can track what I'm doing. Uh, so I just inserted a sphere in here, and I, I went into this icon and just brought in a sphere. Um, a few things to know, when I click on the object uh, here in the objects panel, um, I'm usually gonna see the attributes related to it. So, so from there I can, I can edit things like um, how big it is, uh, how many segments it is. So I'm gonna quickly change my view. Uh, I think the default is to do this shading up here, but I wanna see the lines. Um, when you're working in 3D, I think it's important to think of working in polygons, these surfaces. So I can edit the segments, which will give me a cleaner geometry, but it's, it's just, uh, will be a larger file. You know, for a sphere, it usually comes in a little bit chunky and depending on how nice I want it, uh, I might increase the segments. Um, there are types here too. Some of these objects have different modes. Um, this is a this refers to the paneling that's used on it. Uh, I think that's the same with all these other ones. So maybe I'll just choose that for now. Uh, first of all, want to show you how to get around in this program. Uh, the easiest thing for me is to to press the the keys one, two, and three. So when I hold down one, I can move around. Um, if I hit two, whoops. Actually, if I hold down two, uh, it's gonna let me zoom in and out. And if I hold down three, I can just rotate around here. Um, so it, lo it looks like you need to hit the button to engage it, but once it's pressed, you can let go. Uh, I kind of got in that habit of just holding it down because a lot of times I just want to you know, move around. So this is really important. This is how you how to understand like moving around navigating space. One, two, and three. Again, move, zoom, and rotate. Okay, so um, as I said in this example, I'm gonna try to build a goofy face, something really simple. Uh, and I'm probably not gonna be proud of this, but uh, I wanted to start off uh, I want to give this uh, face maybe some ears, so maybe I'll, and maybe I'm going to make a cat. So uh, I can need these triangular ears, either a cone or, or a pyramid. Maybe I'll choose pyramid, uh, and you can see it's it's inside. It's they're kind of overlapping right now. So maybe I need to zoom out a little bit. You know, can rotate this around. Uh, now there's a few things uh, to look at here. This ear. Uh, as it's set, set up here, is a little bit too big. Um, so I wanna scale it down. We can change this, the size in, in here, uh, in the attributes panel. Uh, but we could also access position, scale, and rotation uh, with some other keyboard shortcuts. Uh, some good ones to know uh, are E. Now E is gonna let us move things around. You can see those arrows turned on, R is gonna help us rotate around here. So we could rotate this a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna hit Command Z, that's undo. Um, so again, I don't need to keep it held down, but I sort of got in the habit of doing that. Uh, so maybe I wanna rotate it. Uh, and T is gonna allow me to scale it. Depending on where I pull it, uh, I could scale like only one axis. If you can see, there's these yellow pieces that let me just scale the axes, or if I pull on these colored 
axes, it's going to kind of, whoops, it's going to scale the whole thing proportionally. All right, so it looks like my computer just crashed, so I needed to kind of get back in here. Uh, again, I have a, a pyramid as, a, as an ear and a sphere for um, a face. I'm building a face out of some primitive, some geometric shapes. I uh, wanted to show this piece here. So as I start to situate this in space, I might have trouble seeing how it actually looks. I mean, I can always rotate around. If I hit three, I can kind of rotate, uh, zoom in and move around. But I find that having multiple views is really helpful. So if you hit this button up here, you can see these four views. One is you can you can set what this is, um, what the view is, but um, perspective, top, right and left. And using those, I'm going to try to uh, just get this this ear of mine kind of situated in space. And so I might pull from different angles. Actually, I think it's in, it's in a pretty good space right now. So I'll leave that like it is. I do want to show one thing. Like I generally don't like to rotate these views. Sometimes you could be in here and maybe you accidentally kind of rotate it. I just feel like that throws me off. Um, if you ever do make that mistake or shift command Z, uh, there we go. So shift command Z again is going to undo the last like camera move that you had. So that could, if you ever mess that up and you think it's ruined, it's not, you can always undo that. So um, it's like command Z, except you add the shift. Um, okay. So that looks good right now. The next thing I'm going to do is, uh, I'm, since I'm making a face, uh, as I alluded to, I want to kind of have the same thing on the other side. Um, what I'm going to do is use a symmetry object, which, um, again, I need to, I need to find it. Here it is, symmetry. If you couldn't find it, you could also do Shift C and write symmetry, right? Um, and you could find it that way. So. Um, in Cinema 4D, one thing to uh, keep in mind is there's a parent-child relationship. What I need to do is think of what's on top as the parent, and then if I tuck anything underneath it, it's a child. So it's, well, there, there we go. It's like you know, family tree. Um, so we have a symmetry object. Let's see why. Oh, something, something weird is happening. I think we want to make sure uh, we can choose the mirror plane. There we go. Um, so. I'm choosing the X and the Y, uh, X, Y, sort of mirror that around, but you could move these around and change that. Um, I believe I did this one thing where I, maybe unintentionally I made these ears really thin, but I'm gonna, uh, again, pull on the yellow arrow or axis and just scale in that direction. Okay, so there's, there's my head uh, with the ears. And let's uh, let's make an eye. So I'm gonna maybe I'll take a something like a cylinder. Uh, let's let's pull it out a little bit, and um, I'm gonna rotate it. So hit hit R and hold down R, and I'm gonna rotate it like, and I can hold down Shift to go in five degree increments. Um, I'm also maybe I'll keep this on because I want to show you what I'm doing. Um, I'm thinking this eye can go in the front, something like this. Uh, you know, eh, that might be okay. I'm looking at that. Now, this eye is, maybe I need more sections if it's too uh, sort of polygony, or uh, you can always go in here and add more sections. Um, there's also something nice, like right now, if you look at it, it's a really flat edge, but I can actually kind of smooth that out. Uh, I select cylinder, and then I want to go into the attributes panel and go to object. And I'm oh, sorry, go to caps actually. So this is uh, the, there's a cap on this that's kind of making that a solid, and I could fill it the cap right here, and you can see that based I can change the radius so I can make it more filleted. And again, I uh, polygons. The more polygons, the more smooth it'll be. So it could be really smooth, um, or if you want a little steppy. Um, you could do that. I think that that works for me, I suppose. Um, okay, so I want to uh, put it in a cylinder object. I want it to be reflected. Now, if, if I do that, though, you'll see something weird. The It mirrored the eye, but it, then it stopped mirroring the pyramid, and that's because the symmetry um, object here can only uh, sort of mirror one 
uh, one group or one item. So um, actually the, the solution to this is grouping these. Let's select both and we'll do, uh, I believe that's option G to group them. Uh, so by grouping them into this null, and null is just like a empty object, um, now we're able to reflect that. Okay, so that's working for us. Maybe we'll do a little mouth. Um, and again, I think we could probably use the cylinder. Again, it's a pretty basic shape. Um, these things, they're coming in, in the center of the, oops. I mean, if I, if I was doing like an elephant or something, maybe this would be the right orientation for it. But I'm actually going to turn it just like I did the other. Uh, it's at 90 degrees, but maybe it's maybe it doesn't need to be at 90 degrees. So I, again, I'm just trying to do something playful. This is, I think, coming out too far. If I look at it, yeah, that looks like it's... So again, look at it at more than one angle. Um, maybe it's something like this. Maybe it needs to be a little bit bigger. And something like this. Uh, and I'll also go to the caps and really fill this out. Uh, maybe something like that. Again, you can fiddle with it. I'm just kind of messing. Oops. All right. You know, it's starting to look more like a pig, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, okay, so uh, the next step is maybe we'll, we want to, this is the snout or the nose kind of area. Maybe we want to make a nose here or an, and a mouth. Okay, so let's make a nose here. I, I think I might even use the same shape. Um, so I'm going to copy this. If you hold on control, it'll kind of make a duplicate uh, in there. Um, and so maybe I'm going to scale this down. I'm looking also in, in, whoops, that's way too big. You know, you can zoom in a little bit. So that's that would be kind of the nose, but uh, I feel like I should make it even smaller. Uh, there's some items that are like, you know, this nose extends too far in. I, I could clean that up or, you know, that's, no one's, no one's really gonna see that, but maybe, maybe I will see that and maybe I won't like that. Oops. So you can always adjust, again, the shape there. Mm. Oops. And you know, you might want to label these like, so you can double click into it, maybe say snout. Nose, okay. And you know, I can pull on these different axes and maybe make it a little bit more rounded. Um, you know, I feel like the eyes are too big. It's, it's bugging me a little bit. Okay, uh, there we go. So now maybe I want to make a little indention here where the mouth could be. Um, maybe I'll use a sphere or something kind of round to do that. So grab a sphere. Let's zoom out. I'm going to pull that out front. Uh, and so what I want to do is use this this shape to like cut out. I want to like uh, wherever it intersects, I wanted to delete. Um, so right now, you can see there is an intersection here, and I want that to be maybe cut out of that snout. So for something like this, I'm going to use another object here called a, a bool. And a bool lets us uh, you access a few different cases, A minus B, A union B, A intersect B, A without B. Uh, in this case, uh, what we'll do is we'll take two objects and make them children of this. So. Uh, the order is important, so we'll t put the nose here first, and then when this is this is going to count as A, and then B, we'll make sure it's underneath it. So A minus B 
is going to, I want to see if I did that right. Um, whoops, I, I brought the wrong thing in. I should have brought the snout in. So A, snout minus B, yeah, and there you, there you can see that I've kind of deleted that shape um, there. And, it, and if you want to see kind of how it's going, I think one thing you could do is hit Command R to get uh, sort of a, a view of that. And you know, here I should probably clean up these polygons unless I want it to be low poly. Um, okay. Uh, and I was I was seeing some things like these eyes. I think were were getting too sunken in. Uh, again, the, if the nose is too po it looks too polygony, we can do that. Um, maybe the the snout could also use a few more segments, make it a little bit smoother. All right, so there's that, and um, maybe the last thing we'll do is add some whiskers onto this. So for whiskers, we could just use some cylinders, again, but make them really skinny. I'm going to to use my all my views again, and you know maybe I'll make it skinny from here, bring it out to the front. Let's rotate it a little bit. Whoops. You know, maybe you want it to be in space a little bit. Let's zoom in a little bit. I think we could still make these still feel really thick. Uh, okay, so I want some whiskers coming out. Um, let's see, maybe we want to rotate it up a little bit. I'm looking at it, the whiskers are coming in front of the eye. Maybe that's something I want, but I actually don't think I want that. Um, how far into the face is it going? I, want, I still want to come out of the snout, so I'm just looking at this. Okay, I think that looks, a, looks all right. That's, that's one side, so um, again, what I might do is just label this whisker, whoops. And then I'll put it in the symmetry object. I'm going to put it inside the null because remember, uh, the symmetry object has to uh, work on one object only. So either group or one item. Um, those are some whiskers. And maybe I'll just make some copies. Hold down Control and click and drag. And then I could pull another one out. Mm, I'm going to have to finesse this a little bit. All right, so yeah, one last whisker, um, and here we go. This is like real quick. It's it's a little bit gnarly, to be honest with you. Uh, I I feel like I w I'd want to keep messing with this. I'm not super happy with the way this turned out, um, but again, I just wanted you to get an introduction to uh, working with primitives, is simple geometric shapes, and sort of uh, get an un. Uh, an intimidating view of like modeling. You can just make something out of these little things. And in fact, to, to actually model something, I think you want to start thinking of things in basic shapes and then from there refine it and, and do that. So um, I would love to see what you can make out of this what kind of sh faces just using these simple shapes and these tools. If we want to look at maybe the shading view, uh, go back up to, up to here. It's also, the shortcut is NA, so if you, if you hit NA, it should take me back to that, and then I can uh, really get a sense of this cat that I just made.